I'd like to uh, turn it over to Dan Jarrell for a second to present the town of Thank you.
our new sand salt shed, $400,000 project up at the industrial park with a quarter million dollar grant. 95% done, should be done very quickly. We had a quarter million dollar grant to fix a sewer line on Brook Street. That's completed under budget. We have another grant that we're working on for Main Street and the Central Avenue area that we're working with our design engineers, another quarter million dollar grant. We're working on that. And we applied for a new grant for, to fix another sewer line. I know this is really fun and exciting stuff, sewer lines. But this is part of what the job is. Over by the post office, we have another broken line. So we're working on these things, and we've been going after as much grant funds that we can to keep the local real estate tax impact down. Also in that, we worked with our highway budget to pave about three miles of road, and we did substantial overhauls to about 10 miles through chip sealing. So we did about 13 miles total, or I believe it's 17% of our roads. And I think if you look at the, the cycle of trying to keep that program going, it shows that there's hope that we'll get to your neighborhood. We're trying to break up the road system into quadrant, take the tax dollars and spread it out proportionally into the northeast side of town, the northwest side of town, the southwest, the southeast, so that the tax dollars are spread out proportionally. One of our major uh, initiatives was to start cleaning up the disaster area mess that was Brown's Corner. And I think if, you're, if you had the opportunity to go down there over the last year, you see that we made tremendous improvements. And this budget that we're presenting here tonight will continue that and hopefully bring that project to a close. So when we say to our Board of Finance members, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the, the plan in place, keep, you know, the, the bus going in the same direction, fund the programs that we've been working on, taking them piecemeal, but we're not really presenting any huge new initiatives because we know that times are tough and we don't want to raise taxes when we, in this type of economy, we want to be as lean as we can. So, also at the same time, what we've done is we've reevaluated our labor force. A lot of the town hall staffing that we had in place has really existed over the last 10 years for a time when the town of New Hartford was building 40 to 50 homes a year. And when you build homes, you need building inspectors, you need assessors, you need people to go out to get those things processed. But at this point in time, we're really only doing 20% or less of what was occurring you know, just six or seven or eight years ago. So what we did is we trimmed our course and we looked for savings in any way, shape, or form. And since I've been here, we've reduced our workforce in the town hall and at the garage by roughly 14 to 15 percent. Now some of that is through things that you probably read about in the newspaper that weren't so uh, easy situations to resolve, but others were good ideas where we worked in cooperative agreement with Burlington to share our assessor and that when we get to that assessor line item you'll see that the assessor is still fully funded but the town of Burlington is paying for half her salary. So while there's no new building and not a whole lot of assessing going on, we're really maximizing the employees are here that are here to work as hard as they can to provide you a good service while there's not a lot of demand. We're trying to just maximize their efforts, make them do a little bit more with a little bit less. So we have some challenges. Obviously, I think you heard Roger and, and Judy talk about oil prices. We all know we have heating oil issues and, and uh, you know, all of our large trucks over at the garage use diesel. So we have things, our costs are increasing also. But we've tried to reallocate our funds the best we can to keep the, the projects going that we have, started last year to continue on into this year, but really remain as, as lean and mean as we can. Do more with less and try not to raise taxes when possible. So. I don't know if we're going to get page three up or not, but if you have some page three there, you'll see now this year, where are we going? We were at $4,622,000 last year. We're asking for $4,624,000 this year. It's an increase of $1,891. It doesn't even register as a percentage. It's basically a zero percentage. Now, when we bid our budget, we built it Instead of asking for budget requests and then to recognize the new economy, what we did is said, hey, look, look within your own organizations and find areas for savings. 
and most of the organizations that we have that deal with the town of Hartford have come through. They, they've recognized in any way, shape, or form they could that they could do more with less. So when you look at, I'll just tell you, as we start out to page four, when we look at the, the general administration budget, there are a couple things you have to understand as we go. These budgets are estimates. We do the best we can. Some of them have contractual estimates that are real to the penny, and others are estimates. The first thing you need to recognize here is that in this budget now, we're, we're in flux because we're negotiating a new contract with our town hall employees. So to recognize that we haven't completed that, we put all town hall employees that are within the union or dovetail on the union at 2% raises. The contract that they're coming out of shows 3.5% raises for the last three years. Fairly confident that we're going to get a better deal than what we had. We're trying to make some good changes to the contract that will do long-term savings for the town. But until that's done, that is an estimate. It's not a hard and fast number. The elected officials that are here running for office, myself and others, have, have been included at no increase. So when you go through page four, you can see right off the bat, there's a lot of minuses. And a lot of the things that you see here are things that have happened. Workers' comp, uh, a lucky situation where we have our rating has been decreased. We saw savings. Our insurance, uh, we found out that we've had some changes within the thing. We are obviously negotiating with our town hall union, so we may see further savings in that area when we adjust the plan. But we also had a little bit of an overbilling scenario that we're going to see some revenue back that will lead to the tune of $9,000. That will show in revenue next year. I'm going to be done before you get to my Okay? So, You'll see also in the, in the legal fees item, we had a lot of legal challenges when I came in last year. A lot of these issues have, have been put to rest. Uh, the Board of Finance, uh, in their wisdom, thought to confront that challenge, perhaps we should raise that line item last year. Seeing as nothing's really come to pass, we've reduced it back to $20,000. Dad, I want to questions as you go. Do you want them at the end? You can feel free to ask a question if you like. As far, as far as the pension, uh, the pension item, mm -hmm. um, since our assessor has been shared 50-50 with, um, with Burlington, are we making any provision as far as her pension liability, which will be ours as a full-time employee? The, I mean, the total cost of her salary, including yes. her pension, is billed 50% to us and 50% to Burlington. Okay. We don't know how long this system will last in place. We think that it's really an ideal system to maximize our assessor in the current time. But what we did is we took the total cost of her employment, divided by two, and we, and we sent a bill to Burlington quarterly. Now, this works well when you don't have a lot of building activity where bets run like crazy and you're building 40 or 50 homes a year. But in this economy where there's not a whole lot of building, we can get through with this and we can really maximize it and show the taxpayers some savings. So we have addressed and asked them for a total cost breakdown. So if you can see, if you can see in the line item on the next page, we're going to get to that. The, uh, the salary alone is $48,000. we are billing based on $60,000 plus. Thousand. And we are putting some of Burlington's money into the pension fund to offset our liability or it, really it comes in as revenue. Okay. It, it doesn't go specifically okay. in, it goes to these guys on the revenue page. Okay, but it's part so. of the money that's coming in from thank you. Yes it is. Thanks. Any other questions on page four? Because I'm going to move along to page five. In page five we just talked about that assessor thing. I think it's a great deal. As you go past that You'll see another thing I just want to tell you is that data processing line item uh, that uh, Beth and Laura have down there uh, has been increased. One of the things that we're trying to do to make Town Hall a little bit more user friendly to people at home is we're trying to get as much data onto the computer and into your homes as we can. So we have a new website going online within the next couple of weeks called New Hartford GIS. And you're going to be able to download all your property maps, all your cards, all the information at the home. At, your home, your zoning maps, your soil maps, everything, floodplain maps, all these things. The website is done.
we're really checking in for bugs just to see if anything's there. But we think that this is one of the things that if Beth is not going to be here every day, we're trying to show you the same amount of service. So what we've asked to do is go online. Instead of just having that vision appraisal where you can get the property card, you're going to be able to get all the mapping and all the things that you need. If you want to know who your neighbors are within a couple hundred feet, you can print it off on mailing labels. It's really a phenomenal tool. And that's going to be at your disposal. And it's, it's really ready to go. I'm just being a little cautious here. I don't want to put it on without checking it one, a few more times before we go live with it. But again, technology is going to help us and provide a service to us while we're sharing that with the town of Burlington. So as we move forward, you'll see that the, uh, the folks down in the registrar's office, again, elected officials that won't see an increase in their salaries, they decreased their supplies. Of course, we had big statewide elections this year. We don't have the same statewide. They were expecting all kinds of uh, extra referendums, possible primaries and things. So they really had to cover all their bases and they were they were, uh, reduced that to reflect the fact that it's over. When you switch over to page six, I'm going to go right by because that's all educational spending. Already started by modeling. And we go into page seven. Page seven is our public safety line items. You'll see a lot of these things have been uh, flatlined here. We have two major shifts in public safety. One of our two, we have two resident state troopers for years. It was Rich Strollis and Mike Tranquillo. Mike Tranquillo got promoted, is now in the Western District Major Crime Unit. So we have been replaced. They go through the process of evaluating all the people that apply for the job. The fellow that got the job costs $20,000 than the guy that we had last time. The selectmen are now uh, in process of, after hearing that within a few days of one of our last meetings, evaluating the costs associated with the resident trooper program. We have to have a minimum of one unless we organize ourselves as a local police department, which would require capital infrastructure improvements to have a jail holding area, all the things that go along with it, it would be a substantial investment. We do have very knowledgeable, good people there, but this is a, a significant adjustment in salary to have the trooper program in town to see a $31,300 increase. So we do have a, uh, a two-year contract pending that we approved last night. It has a 30-day termination clause in it. We have the ability to reevaluate uh, the direction of the town. For now, I believe the selectmen are going to stay with the resident tro trooper plan as it exists, but we are going to reevaluate. The second major shift in the public safety line item is the Ambulance Association. The Ambulance Association and the insurance laws have changed over. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask you something about the uh, state trooper? Uh, yes. Are there two? Yes, we have and, two and state and troopers. Why do we have two. Is New Hartford that crime ring that we need to? We we actually have uh, a fairly strong level of activity. Yeah, I believe that our overall staffing for police will see the need to increase over the next few years. Our population is growing. We've had several violent crimes in town, uh, some with weapons. If you recall, down on, on Route 44, uh, the bank was robbed. Michelangelo was robbed. Uh, we did have a, uh, an issue on Stub Hollow not too long ago with a, uh, a fatality. There, there are things that perhaps don't make the papers every day that I am made aware of that uh, is part of the job that is not so comfortable. Uh, I, I think we have very, very talented people that work for us. We have four full-time police officers and one part-time. But, you know, our little town is growing, and now we, our population has grown 15% over the last 10 years. We're just under 7,000 people, and I think the time will come. I think that the biggest, the biggest issue in our town is speeding. Uh, it's, everyone says, you should see my road, Dave, you should see my road, and I said, you know, everybody says that to me. It's on every street in town. It's the society we live in. People are being forced to squeeze four hours out of their day to make as much money to support their households and their kids. And, and you know, the, just the, 
the cost of everyday life and they've got to get to work as quick as they can and get home and pick up their kids and make dinner and, and do what they can and you know speed alone is an issue where I tell you I wish I had just one extra police officer to do speed enforcement every day and, and I not that I like to impose tickets on people but it is a safety issue and, and that's part of the problem that as we go forward I think we addressed it Tom and myself and Bruce last night is that that's part of the the uh, tight rope that we walk here with zero budgets is eventually we're going to have to start advocating for some larger expenditures in areas to keep this town safe mm -hmm. in, in terms of infrastructure and public safety. So there, there are issues out there and we do have days like yesterday where there were no police on. They go for they go out a rotational cycle and there is the off chance day where the only police officer, officer on is an overlay there is always one other police officer on which is the overlay patrol guy from the Canaan barracks so when I say we have two resident troopers there's really three one that's just here doing patrol then our state two residents uh, constables and then the part-time guy but there's a lot of territory to cover this is a very big town and you know we have our challenges me. Wasn't Dan Janko, he, he used to be um, a, a, a resident trooper, yes. uh, wasn't he hired locally to replace one of the two uh, resident troopers? I believe that was under the last administration and that never came about. So haven't we already made provision to replace one of them within the budget? Uh, I'm not sure that he replaced a trooper. Uh, but he, that was the, the I know that he, he was a trooper yes, he was, yeah. and hired stationed him here as, and went to constable, retired right, from yeah, the state right, after 20 years. He was a constable who was supposed to replace one of the two state troopers. It just reminded me of that. And that never happened. You know, I'm just wondering, is that, do we already have the personnel there to be able to cut one of the two troopers? I, I, I wouldn't recommend cutting staff overall. The choice to stay with two troopers versus one trooper and three constables is the discussion. If you look at the salary overall and, and, the, and the fact that if you're looking at something in the ninety dollars to $95,000 range per state trooper, then you look at having a constable at sixty-five dollars to 70000 the possibility of having to provide health care at twenty dollars to 25000 and then the required $30,000 vehicle. You know, but, it's, but you know what, what I'm getting at though, we added a full time constable who was an ex state trooper with the idea that we were going to replace one of the two state troopers. So now we have a full time constable, ex state trooper, and still two state troopers there. I'm just wondering. I, I think you're asking me to address the actions of other people that were here before my time. Well, I can't well, tell you the have, mindset. Okay, so, so personnel wise, we don't have enough people on staff right now to just say, no, we're not going to fund a second position for the coming year for a state trooper no we, we have days where there are there are no as i said before there are days where there is no police presence other than the patrol from the canaan barracks and that is a shared patrol with mark hampstead and Hartland. so if you're in your home and something happens on a day when there is no staff trooper because they're on the rotation five days on three days off which all the police do if you're in that particular situation and that trooper is at the scene of a crime in Heartland, it could be a wait until they get to your house. So we don't get seven day coverage for these people? We do not have seven day a week, okay. 24 hour a day coverage in this town. No. We do the best we can to keep the hours covered uh, into the early evening, but all day. In the late nights, we have less coverage. I don't want to talk too much about the specifics of our coverage. <laughs> Although I trust you all. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Second line item you're going to see significant uh, modification here is the Ambulance Association. The Ambulance Association is something that we're, we're floating a trial balloon here. Insurance laws have changed. We used to fully fund the entirety of the Ambulance Association. The Ambulance Association now is a uh, able to bill fee for service uh, operation. Uh, last year they ran $167,000 surplus, which was larger than the entirety of our town. The, uh, we work with them and want to support them, and I 
think this is something that we're going to be evaluating, but uh, at the present time, we're asking everyone to do uh, as much as they can with a little bit less. I know it's a, a difficult uh, situation. I don't want to say that the selectmen are not supportive of our, of our uh, emergency service personnel. We are. It, it's just the, the recognition of we all have to run as tight as we can in this economy. If the, if the emergency service needs more, we know that we can address it through the selectmen or a town meeting, but right now we're all trying to adjust to this new economy. Into the highway, I think you'll see that uh, we're basically flatlining most of the highway budget. Again, we we're trying to stay with the program that we implemented last year. The, uh, we had considered reducing staff in this area. We will see a retirement in this area, so we will have some turnover, but it will continue to be the same plan. And the attempt is to go with major infrastructure upgrades to 10 miles through the chip seal program that we implemented, and then trying to pave in between two and three miles, depending on the will of this board here and whether or not they are going to provide the access to the CRRA money that I asked for. <coughs> so, uh, the uh, last year we targeted four roads. We did Burwell Road, Kinsey Road, Southeast Road, and targeted Steel Road as the worst road in town. We did a portion of Steel Road, but we'd like to do more. We are, we'll come out with our road list at the end of May. Was there a question? I have a question. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm reading this correctly. I see the 2009-2010 actual, so obviously that's history. We know what we spent. Yep. Uh, I take a look at what was approved for that year, uh, especially in this, and there's other parts of the budget that reflect the same thing <coughs> in degrees. Uh, but this one here is ran almost $200,000 over budget. It did. Okay, so the actual spent in the 2009-2010 was a million five and change. Okay, and for 2010 and 11 was approved at about a three three million one sixty seven, which was less than what we spent in 2009. But I don't have any actuals for 10 and 11 to see whether you overspent that budget too. So I guess my point is, is you're budgeting for 11 and 12 at a million four, which is actually ninety five thousand dollars less than what you spent in 2009. So the validity of the budget, in my mind, unless I know what you've spent this year, okay, you missed it in 2009-2010, and I don't know what you did currently, so why should I think you're going to get it right that far out? You understand that I came in mid-year. Oh, no, no. I... We, had, we had a, we, we deal, dealt with, we dealt with a, what we believed was a hundred thousand dollar deficit mid-year when I took over and cured that through when you go to the capital reallocation on the debt service we actually had to move money around to cover shortages we had a major washout in the industrial park which was a sixty thousand dollar or fifty or sixty thousand dollar washout that was taken off budget that had to be fixed on the line item there and to have since experienced the second washout that we're still studying a way to fix it's a nebulous view <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I, I mean, the, the concern is is that if, if we are experiencing over budget of things that we can't really predict, does it make sense that we should under budget and hope it doesn't happen? We, uh, it's a difficult issue. I, we approached it last night with the paving line, and just in the last two or three days, we received word that our actual paving cost increase went up seven and three quarter percent over the last month. That's oil. Okay, that's, that's the volatility of oil. And that will impact how we're going to address what we're going to pay. Now we do have uh, a retirement that's happening here and we do have a little fluidity in the labor line item that hopefully can address the retirement issue and perhaps cover some of the shortfall and thing. You're 100% you're correct. We've had a very difficult winter here, and we did have some excessive storms where I've applied on the town's behalf for $83,000 in reimbursement for the January storms. We're still addressing with the superintendent schools to address $20,000 in roof clearing expenses that may be eligible. And then if you recall the March 7th flooding 
it, they're still working on whether or not to declare whether or not that will be deemed a FEMA event. Well, we had, with all of our dirt roads, $10,000, almost $11,000 just in stone replacement expense alone, not including labor. So that could have been a $20,000, $25,000 repair bill that comes <coughs> off budget. There's just no way to, to recoup that other than, and we're lucky that these FEMA events are being considered because you hit the nail on the head. When you get these events here, what happens is I bring them to these guys and say, look, you know, Houston, there's a problem. And, and we need some money to fix these issues. Because I'm going early summer. When we go to the majority of these line items here are road maintenance oriented. And when we get the go button in, Je in July, we want to be paving and working in the hot summer sun. That's when the best paving and, and road work is done. So when you look at the, the half a million dollars associated with paving, that's really done July, August, two months into the budget. So it's not like you can hold off and do that because you're not paving through the winter time. But uh, there are there are some challenges, and like I said in the in the beginning of my statement, these are estimates, and this is one of the challenges in this type of economy where you know as I was going to wrap up with the fact that it's really uncertain how long we can go along to continue the zero. You know I think I, I'm definitely sensitive to the zero. I know the economy. My wife knows the economy. Uh, intimately, she was laid off for a year. There's a lot of people in town that have, that have confronted the same sort of, sort of challenge, so I'm very sensitive to it, and I want to do the best I can. But in the same regard, you make a valid point. So we are trying to do the best we can to keep the road system up, and I think if we follow this plan, you'll see that if we did 17, say 15 to 17 percent last year through chip seal and paving, we do 15 to, you know, we're doing almost, you know, 30 plus percent of our road system. In a, in a two year span, that gives you hope that we're going to get to your road. You know, we may not do the complete overhaul, but we're going to get there and we're going to give it the upgrade it needs to improve the quality. So I know these guys are starting to look at it, so I'm going to get past planning and development. See, you'll see the planning and development, what I talked about earlier about uh, adjusting staff and salaries. When uh, we changed over our planning and zoning personnel, uh, we hired the new person at a salary lower than the last person to reflect their, their experience level. Uh, on page 10, the libraries, the libraries in town uh, that we subsidize have gone for years at, at pretty flat funding. Like us, like you, their oil, their electric, everything associated with their operations uh, have gone up. They've asked for increases. They've asked for increases more than what they're getting here. Uh, we're trying to show some sensitivity to cover some of the increase. I wish we could do more. And let me tell you, I had more in this line item until I got the state trooper bill. So, difficult. Uh, regional, on the last budget, health, sanitation, and welfare, you'll see that the, uh, the big thing here is the dump. The, the folks at the dump have done a good job. They've lowered their budget about $8,000. Parks and recreation, not a whole lot here. Uh, we do give all our organized sports uh, allocations. We had four sports, they were all getting 1000 A couple. This is really feed or seed money to get them going. A couple of sports have been really going for a long time now. They, don't, they haven't taken the money in the last couple of years, so we reduced it. That was a recommendation from our rec director. And very briefly, mm -hmm. for the dump, we've been running at a surplus every single year. Yes. Um, two years ago, we gave back to the town 19,000. Last year, I believe it was 50 something thousand. Uh, why is it that we, ju we just don't um, pay them close to what it is that they need without needing to have reimbursement? Coming back to what Alicia said about, well, you know, if you know you're going to have a surplus, why don't you come down to the real figure? We, we had a lengthy discussion about this. Part of the problem with theirs is the volatility of the recycling materials and the cost, just like you see oil is fluctuating and going up. The recyclable materials, the metals and things that they sell, the prices are all over the map and they don't know what type of volume they have. So they are in the process, we're right now negotiating a new agreement with either CRRA who handles the trash disposal or another agency who might outbid them that hasn't been determined who will actually take our trash beyond 2012. But 
that cost is being talked about at a, at a cost that's about 10% less. And I think you're going to see a shift in how this is budgeted within the next year to two years. So you're going to try to bring down more to the actual cost? Though. Well, I think that there, with that facility, there's always going to be a need to cover uh, some level of uh, volatility in their budget. Okay. Peter? Yeah, uh, yeah I, sorry to back you up a little bit. That's okay. I if you gave $2,000 to each of the libraries. Yes. But when you look at that as a percentage of the library's budget, it's less than 1% for Beakley and over 4%, almost 4.5% for Bakerville. How did you arrive at that? They, they both asked me for $6,000 and I, both, I tried to give them both $6,000 until the police line item came in at $30,000. It was the best I could do. Well, $6,000 as a request is a much higher percentage for Bakerville than it is for Beakwood. So why didn't you go by percentages instead of flat amounts? Because Beakley gets $214,000. Bakerville only gets forty five. Do you look at the circulation, the difference in circulation to say sir? Yep, I did. We had a lengthy meeting. It's a difficult choice. Uh, they they all have substantial uh, challenges. I think it, there's no easy answer here. I wish I could have given them the full amount. The amounts here for the libraries are more than the entire increase for my whole budget. Thank you. I have a second part to the, the health question. Yes. There's also the Ambulance Association. If they ran a, a over $100,000 surplus last year, why are we not asking for that back? I'm just putting that out there. It's part of our budget. We overpaid. And why are we not getting that money back? We, we have had lengthy discussions with the volunteers on the Ambulance Association. And how we, we fund the Ambulance Association is the future is changing. I think that if you look uh, at the past history of where we've been and how the funding's gone forward, uh, I think you're dealing with a, a cultural shift in the operation and how the insurances, they basically operated on a shoestring here. And I think they've been trying to uh, put aside money so that they could save money to make modifications to their facility or move towards a new facility. But that's not what we're funding, though. So why is it that we get to keep that money? Can I ask you to speak up a little bit because the sorry. body people that can't hear the yeah, question. Sorry. Well, no, I, I guess my bottom line is we're not funding the future or anything or, you know, the changing model. We have a surplus that we've been overpaying. Why are we not asking for that money back to come back to the town? It's taxpayers' money. Just, that's all. The, the entirety of the budget that we fund at about 100000 represents about 25% of their operating budget. It's not the entirety of their budget. They have a vast sum of revenue that comes from other sources. So we're not giving them everything it takes to operate. The, what they're trying to do and what they've done is trying to work towards making modifications. And I think at some level, I, I don't begrudge somebody from trying to operate a surplus. I think what you see here is the selectmen's acknowledgement of the surplus that they're running is a little bit too big when it's bigger than the town budgets. So I think we, we expect other Region 7 and the local board of ed to be right down to the dime without keeping a surplus on hand. I think that's what we should apply to everybody. Just wanted to get that out Appreciate there. your comment. Okay. okay. Uh, commissions and other agencies, when you get on to page 14, you'll notice there's only two actual changes here. Everybody else, I basically told them that we're going to try and operate where we are. Uh, we are trying, again, ever present push to do economic development. And on the last page, you have our capital budget. Our capital budget consists of $250,000. The, the lion's share of the capital budget, which has been basically reduced by twenty-five dollars or $27,500 from last year, is the continuation and the finishing of the Browns Corner project that we started last year. We have a roof issue at Brody Park that we want to address. We are also budgeting for the future with a reval that will come in, not this year, but next year, which is an $80,000 expense. So you see us putting aside $40,000 this year to soften the blow for taxes next year. The, uh, we also have a, a police cruiser in there. I believe we have an eight or nine year old police cruiser in that we're trying to replace. 
and a continuation of our Town Hall, uh, Town Hill Bell Historic Monument restoration that we thought we could get done for $5,000, but I think we're finding out that it's going to be a little bit more expensive than that. But this should complete the task. The other issues that we have here, Town Hall equipment, uh, and uh, the technology line items are things that stay. And then the wing plow, we don't have a wing plow. That's one of those double plows that you put on the, the big trucks. We found out what the expenses of not having that this year. We had to spend almost $10,000 to have a private contractor. When you get heavy years like this, you have to have that type of heavy equipment. So it's time that we get it, and we are doing just that to plan for the future. Okay? Can you, can you explain the Brody Field House uh, $50,000 for a roof? Mm -hmm. They also say to write a study. Are That's we right. funding just the roof replacement? The, the, is that the, cost the primary that? expense uh, associated with that is the field house roof. If there are any leftover funds, we have a task force that are evaluating sites for future development. We want to give them whatever the leftover funds are for environmental site assessment work on, on other parcels that might come up as their study continues over time to be able to say, what are the pros and cons associated? We did a study on South Brody. They're looking at the rear of Antolini, and they are actually uh, putting out a mailer in the rec flyer that will address the possibility of, of people coming forward and donating or, or a land deal into the future for a possible place that would handle future. And what we want to do is be able to give them the, the money to support uh, the environmental and site assessment engineering work that no, they no need problem, to, no problem with that. to put want, together a, cohere, a cohesive presentation. Yeah. What is the cost of the, the field house roof? Well, we estimate that it could be pretty close. It's not just a roofing job because you have uh, pitched issues. This year, the guys would even go on it. It's been tarped for I can't tell you how long. And when I asked them to re-tarp the roof again, the highway guys would not go So it's kind of like the... We have, we have to raise the pitch. Sorry, not, not a specific figure there. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. What is that building used for? I, I thought it's been empty for many years. No, it's, it's used for storage at this point. We put all of our winter or summer equipment in for now, but it does have the ability to be used as a gymnasium or a gathering place. This would really be the first phase of sealing it to the weather to preserve it so we don't lose it. Then future phases. We've had donations of all new windows and siding that we have in inventory right now. So if we do the roof and we do the windows and siding, we can actually create a pleasant exterior and then take it to the next level of doing well and septic and put bathrooms in it and maybe space heater and you could have a fairly large gymnasium. It is larger than the uh, gymnasium at Ann Antolini or New Hartford Elementary by far. It's the largest building and gymnasium in the town. So it does provide value, and as we challenge, I challenge Dennis and the Rec Commission to make their, uh, their activities self-sufficient, and they believe that this building is really a, a possible cornerstone in putting them over that hurdle to provide additional programs where they can come off of the tax roll, so to speak, and getting money to run a self-sustaining operation. You know, getting more campers up there in the summer, offering more programs, bringing in more revenue so that they're not asking the taxpayers to, to shoulder that burden. So, anyway, that basically completes my presentation. A lot of the, the remainder here is the revenue portion, which then the board of finance uh, addresses. You guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, have questions for me? I know that you've heard this before. Any questions for the uh, first question? Anything, anything you'd like to come about? Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming.